With threats to our nation waiting around every corner, adaptability is more important than ever. When conditions change without notice, quick strategic thinking is crucial. And with obstacles consistently impending, determination is essential in overcoming them. It's this willingness, decisiveness, and resilience that sets Marines apart. With our fighting spirit, we don't just fight battles, we win them. Marines are the constant our nation counts on to fight the unknown. And through adaptable problem solving, we do just that. Learn more at Marines.com. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day, lo. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Welcome to Anything Footy. Notice the subtle name change? Yes. For one episode, we're going all out. And why? Because for only the second time in history, we're sending a women's football team to the Olympic Games. In Birmingham, for the latest Team GB announcement, I'm Michael. And I'm John, and this is the Olympic and Paralympic podcast. Football is an Olympic sport. One of the para-athletes we interviewed this week says, why don't you like football? As we always say, we do, we love it. But so many other pods talk footy, so we wanted to focus on sports in the Olympics and raise the profile of those sports. Now, women's football in the UK and the world, frankly, is unrecognisable since 2012 when Team GB reached the quarterfinals in London. But as we saw with the pandemic, it's still well down the pecking order. So no apology from us on this episode's special theme. As ever, anything but footy will round up the rest of the Olympic and Paralympic sporting headlines, including taekwondo and judo. And the cancellation of the European Track Cycling Championships, but not for COVID reasons. You can get in touch anytime at anything but F on Twitter or message us on Insta and Facebook. Our website is www.anythingbutfooty.com or email anythingbutfooty at gmail.com. It's a glorious day here in Birmingham. We're in England's second city. This, of course, will be the centre of the Commonwealth in 12 months' time, when Birmingham hosts the Commonwealth Games of 2022. We're at the Botanic Gardens in Birmingham, in Edgebaston, close to the cricket ground. And here, the peacocks strut on the finely manicured lawns. And the reason we're here, Team GP have unveiled what is only the second squad to have entered women's football competition since the introduction of the sport to the Olympic programme back in Atlanta 1996. Five Olympians who competed for Team GB at the Games of 2012 in London return nine years on. England's goalkeeper, Karen Bardsley, captain then, Steph Houghton, Jill Scott, Ellen White and Scotland's Kim Little. That's worth mentioning. The Scottish and Welsh and Northern Irish FA all gave their support to this idea of having a Team GB again. It's the first on away soil. They miss Rio in 2016. And apart from Northern Ireland... All the home countries are represented. All the nations are here. One of them is Scotland's Caroline Weir. Super honoured to be involved in Team GB. I'm a proud Scots person, but I'm proud to be British as well. And so, yeah, it's a huge honour for me. I'm delighted to be alongside Kim, who had the experience of 2012. Um, she's a top player. I've, I've known her for years and obviously playing the Scotland team with her. So, yeah, we, we're so happy to be representing Scotland and, um, in this team. And, yeah, just excited to be part of it and to look forward now to Tokyo. What does it mean to get given that Team GB Tokyo 2020 top team? today honestly it hasn't really sunk in i think um now that we're here and we've got the kit um i've had dreams of playing football since i was really young i always thought world cups euros you don't necessarily think in olympic games just football is not necessarily associated associated with olympics um but obviously that's changed over the last few years so it's it's huge it's such a unique opportunity and um yeah like i say i'm, I'm so honored to be here today 
and back at Hibs, will they be proud of you? <laughs> I'm sure they will. You know, it came out this morning and I've had so many messages from people that, you know, haven't maybe spoken to very recently. Um, but yeah, I know back home, um, everyone's super proud and, and, and happy for me. And what are you going to Tokyo to achieve as a squad, as a team? Well, we're, we're going to go from gold, I think. That's the plan. Um, we know it's going to be tough and, you know, we've got a bit of preparation to do before that. But I think we have to go in and, and set our heights high. We've got a talented squad and, yeah, there, there's definitely top teams out there. The conditions will be tough, but um, I think we've, we've got every chance to go, go there and compete and, and hopefully be successful and bring something back to the UK. And a big Man City cohort in this team. Is that going to play into the hands of Team GB that a lot of you know each other from your club football? Yeah, I think so. I think for me coming in as well, um, you know, as one of the Scots, that who there's only two of, um, it helps knowing a lot of the, the team already. I obviously have played with them for quite a few seasons at Man City, so I know them really well. There's other players I've played with as well through my career. So, um, yeah, it definitely helps, I think, on the pitch as well. We know how each other play, um, but obviously off the pitch, we know each other really well, and, and I think that will help going forward. Well, all the very best. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Now, I also had the pleasure of interviewing Caroline a few weeks back, and she told me that growing up and playing at Dunfermline and Hibs, the best Scottish club for women's football at the time, She still only really watched men's football. So let's hope this summer, and of course the Euros here in 2022 for the women, will inspire the next generation. Weir is an attacking midfielder and plays for Man City and has a really strong flavour in this squad from City as well, isn't there, Michael? A huge number of players from Manchester City, John. Ten of the 18-strong squad. Runners-up in this year's Women's Super League behind Chelsea who have just three representatives, as well as Steph, Ellen and Jill, who we've already mentioned. The City players are Ellie Roebuck, the goalkeeper from Manchester City and England. Lucy Bronze, the defender. Demi Stokes, another defender. Kira Walsh, a midfielder. And Lauren Hemp, the forward, who is the youngest in the squad, aged 20. Also, Georgia Stanway, another striker from Manchester City and England. To be going to an impl- Olympic Games, it's it's surreal. Um, to even say it, it it's crazy. Um, obviously, it was announced today and, and the squad came out today and it was just unbelievable to see my name amongst the players that have been selected. And It's not quite hit home yet and I don't think it will until we potentially get there or afterwards when it all sinks in. Um, but yeah, it's an unbelievable achievement and I'm very, very grateful for the opportunity and yeah, I can't wait to share it with my teammates and my family. Was the Olympics something growing up as a, a young player that you looked at or thought about? Yeah, definitely. The Olympics is probably the biggest stage, the worldwide stage, all athletes coming together, no matter what the sport is, and it's almost the biggest honour to represent GB. Um, So yeah, it's always been in my thoughts, but it was never really possible when I was growing up, because obviously the the women's football wasn't really in the Olympic Games, obviously it was in 2012, sorry, Um, and at the time I was 13 years old, so it was quite an an exciting um, thing to be able to watch but obviously to be there myself now is, is it's unbelievable I still I can't put it into words because it's such a such an honour and do you and your teammates feel that that sense of history if you like about what you're going to do the first team to go overseas and wear that shirt yeah definitely we found out today that we're the only team um, within the women's football that have actually qualified to get here and obviously we did that at the previous World Cup um, to obviously qualify for the Olympic Games this year so yeah in that sense we've already made history um, but obviously to wear the badge to go over to Tokyo to obviously represent England obviously we're going there because to represent Team GB to, sorry sorry <laughs> to represent Team GB but on my behalf I'm obviously um, English as well and it's it's amazing that we can unite um, and obviously come with the Scottish and the Welsh as well and we can come together as Team GB um, but yeah it'll be an exciting opportunity semi-finals obviously at the World Cup for England as the Lionesses. The 2012 team obviously reached the last eight. What is the class of 2021 looking to bring back? Gold. Um, I don't think we're afraid to say it, that we're here to win. Um, We're not just going over to Tokyo to compete or to make up the numbers. We're here to to bring back the gold medal. Um, So that's something that we'll work towards. We'll focus on in training. We'll do the best we can to put ourselves in the best possible position to bring home the gold medal. Tough group, tough draw. 
yeah, it's a tough draw, um, but you've got to beat the best to be the best. Um, and that's something that we're willing to do and that we'll put in the fight for each other to, to try and get to that point. Well, the very best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, Wales have just one representative in Sophie Ingle of Chelsea, while there's also four reserves announced who will travel to Tokyo. I wonder what that is like. As Are you an Olympian or are you not an Olympian? You get the kit, you get the tracksuit, but do you get the honour? And now some of the other sports do it as well. I appreciate that. But making them feel like part of the squad will be absolutely crucial, Michael. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one, that. And the person whose job it is, is the current England caretaker boss, Hager Risa, who succeeded Phil Neville in leading this team. She will lead the squad at the Games in Tokyo later on in the summer. As a player, she won gold with Norway in Sydney in 2000, so she knows what the Olympic Games is like. Those reserves are Sandy McIver, the goalkeeper from Everton, uh, Lottie Wilburn moy the defender from Arsenal, Neve Charles, a midfielder from Chelsea, and Ella Toon, a forward from Manchester United. Here's Sandy's thoughts on what it is to be part of that reserve team squad. Everyone has, they haven't really looked at you as a, whether you're a, in the team or as a reserve player. As I say, it, we are here as a 22 um, and, and everyone here has made uh, the four of us feel very welcome. And what does it feel like to you to be involved in the setup and to be part of that? Um, it's incredible. Um, you know, the Olympics was never something that I really had um, like a goal towards um, until it was postponed uh, from last year. Um, but yeah, I mean, to actually be here is, is amazing. I'm really looking forward to get out to Tokyo. So how do they include you? You're on the plane, you, you get to go. How does it actually sort of work? Um, well, from what we've been told, you know, kind of everything's the same, you know, apart from obviously not being in the squad on match day. You know, we can be on the pitch for the warm-up, you know, and help out in that regard. Um, but yeah, I mean, apart from actually being on the pitch, we're treated just as everyone else. Will you consider yourself at the end of it an Olympian then? Yeah, I think you've got to. Um, you know, I think it's important not to segregate ourselves or feel segregated. Um, and I think that's something that's been made very clear to everyone. And as a professional player, you can't go out there just thinking, well, I'm carrying drinks and bibs and cones. You, you need to be ready, don't you? You need to be able to step in. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's a very intense schedule. Um, and as you say, yeah, I think we've all got to be ready. And, you know, hopefully it doesn't come to that. But yeah, no, we will be ready. How important is it for your sport that Team GB ascending have qualified a team this time around? I think it's really important. You know, I think the Olympics is one of, if not the biggest sport event in the world. You know, not only for football, but there's other sports there. And I think to be a part of this event um, is going to be really special. Team GB will face hosts Japan, Canada and Chile in Group E of the competition, kicking off before the opening ceremony on July 21st. Like they did, of course... In London, I'll always remember heading to Cardiff a couple of days before the opening ceremony. I think it might have been the Wednesday or the Tuesday. Um, we went down on the first Great Western. I say we, it was just me with lots of other supporters. Uh, went to, of course, the Millennium Stadium, as it was known then in 2012, and watched the Cameroonians arrive in their um, London 2012 bus. Team GB women arrive as well. Didn't actually get to watch the match. Well, I did, but I was in the car park next door doing some radio reports. So I watched it on the phone. And, and that was the way that it was and, and will be, of course, in Tokyo as well for, for people who aren't rights holders, that you are kind of behind barriers. There's always that joke. You'll hear us often saying we're standing behind barriers or doing interviews by bins or various other things. But I always one of my favourite memories of London 2012 was covering football. And it changed my opinion and it's a very non-British opinion that the football is part of the Olympics. We've got this hang up in this country that football shouldn't be in the Olympics. It means a lot to people. We've heard it means a lot to people here. Caroline Weir earlier uh, representing Scotland and Team GB, of course, playing at the Olympic Games. And it's going to be an absolutely brilliant competition for Team GB. Michael, you've been there. You've been amongst them. You've been talking to them. What was what? What's been your reflections of the day? A really relaxed feel about this team announcement today, and the thing that came through stronger than ever is, despite the fact it's a squad of eighteen and four reserves, the feeling very much is it's 
a squad of 22 going to Tokyo. And the other key message that came out, and I spoke to a lot of the players today, both the inexperienced ones making their Olympic debut and some of those players that returned from 2012, very much on their mind is a gold medal. That is what they're going to Tokyo. They're not going there to make up the numbers. They are not going there just to say that they took part in the Olympic Games. They're going there. They want to win. They look at the netball team on the Gold Coast in 2018, the England netball team and their gold medal. They look at the impact of what the hockey team, the women's hockey team did, history-making gold medal in Rio, and they want to emulate that. They know this is another important step on the road for women's football. We've seen Chelsea do well in Europe this year. We saw England do well at the World Cup a couple of years ago in France. We know the European Championships are coming to these stores, these shores, and this is just another very important building block on that success. So they're going there to take part. They know it's a tough draw. But they're going there with big ambitions of winning the gold medal. Well, we wish them, of course, all the best of luck. But this is Anything But Footy, the Olympic and Paralympic podcast. So what else has been going on this week? A big week for Paralympics GB, who've named three more team members for Tokyo in a brand new sport for the Games, Taekwondo. Beth Munro, who only took up the sport in 2019, world champion Matt Bush and world number one Amy Truesdale will all make history in August by representing Britain in the Paralympics for the first time in Taekwondo. Congratulations to them. Chris Skelly also looking to book a place in the Paralympics. He claimed silver in the Baku Judo Grand Prix, the penultimate qualification event before Tokyo, and the first competition for British athletes since before the COVID pandemic in February 2020. There was a fourth place finish for Elliot Stewart too. Attention now turns to the last qualifying event in Warwick on June the 19th. A sporting cancellation isn't that unusual in the last year, but this time it's not for COVID reasons. The European Track Cycling Championships have been removed from being staged in Belarus following the latest escalation in politics there that saw an anti-government journalist taken off a Ryanair flight, which had been forced to land in the country. Organisers are now looking for new hosts, but Stephen Park, Performance Director for British Cycling, has said while it's disappointing to lose another race from an already disrupted calendar, I do commend and support the decision made to cancel the European Track Championships scheduled to take place in Belarus. One other sports line for you in the world of the Olympics. Hammer thrower Sophie Hitchin has announced her retirement from athletics. She won a brilliant bronze medal in Rio in 2016. Yes, best wishes to Sophie Hitchin, who gave me one of my finest radio moments in Rio. Because ahead of the athletics competition starting, I was asked to predict a name that would win a medal that no one had ever heard of. And I predicted Sophie Hitchin in the hammer, having seen her do so well at the World Championships in the previous year, but having been behind a number of Russians who I knew wouldn't be competing in Rio. So I predicted that medal and lots of people at home were, well, that was a very good prediction, Michael. How did you know about that one? So best (laughs) wishes to Sophie for her retirement. As always, you can get in touch anytime at anything but F on Twitter. Message us on Insta and Facebook. Find us online, anythingbutfooty.com. And you can drop us an email, anythingbutfooty at gmail.com. And it may well have been all about footy, here in Birmingham today, but with the days ticking away before the start of the 2020 Olympics in 2021 and many more athletes to be confirmed for the Paralympics too, you can be assured anything but footy won't take its eye off the ball, the track, the pool, the court or the field. Sports Social Podcast Network. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. That should brighten your day a little. Actually, a lot. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. BGW group. Void prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.